humans were supposed to be cowards. The Galactic Federation Species Registry had them listed as a 2 of 16 on the Aggression Index. Our interactions with the Turan Union up until this point supported those conclusions. They had not fought any wars among themselves in centuries and had formed a unified world government prior to achieving FTL travel. They had responded with eagerness rather than hostility to first contact. Unlike many species, Earth had resolved every dispute through diplomacy and compromised since it became an official member of the Federation. For example, a few years ago, the expansionist Zanuck claimed a Terran mining colony as their territory. The Federation braced itself for a minor conflict as they expected the humans to defend their outpost, but the humans simply shrugged and agreed to hand off the planet for a small yearly fee rather than going to war. The Terran Union somehow ended up as prominent trading partners for the Zanuck. There was also an incident where the paranoid Hodel arrested Terran ambassadors on charges of being spies. Imprisoning diplomats with zero evidence was a clear provocation to war, but the humans did nothing. They didn't even raid the facility where their representatives were being held. They simply opened back channel negotiations with the Hodel and arranged a prisoner exchange, swapping a few smugglers for their people. Thoughts on the humans varied depending on who you asked. Some in the Federation found their pacifism commendable and appreciated their even tempered statesmanship. Others thought that it was weakness that led them to avoid war. I was in the latter camp. The only reason not to respond to blatant insults with aggression was that they didn't have the wits or the strength for it. When the devourers came, the three most militaristic species in the galaxy, as per the aggression index, banded together to stand against their approach. We didn't know much about them, but we called them the Devourers since their sole mission was to drain stars of their energy. I can't tell you why they would do such a thing. Whatever their reasons, they would take one system by force, suck it dry, and move on to the next. Our fleet, the finest the Federation had to offer, suffered heavy losses when we clashed with enemy destroyers. We fought as hard as we could, and it didn't matter. Our weapons hardly seemed to scratch their ships. It was a tough decision, but I ordered what was left of the fleet to retreat. As much as we needed to stop them, we would lose the entire armada if we stuck around any longer. I sent out a distress signal, relaying our grim situation and pleading for reinforcements. There were other species with lesser but still potent militaries within the Federation, but my request was returned with silence. Not a single one of those cowards volunteered to help. Hearing of our defeat, I suppose they decided to flee and fend for themselves. I thought we were on our own until we detected human ships jumping to our position. How ironic. The only ones who came to our aid were the galactic pushovers. There were only five of them, according to our sensors, which was not nearly enough to mount a fight, a pathetic showing, but it was more than the zero ships that had been sent by the other Federation powers. Sir, the Terran are hailing us. What do they think they're going to do, talk the enemy to death? First officer BZ quipped. I heard a few snickers from my crew but quickly shushed them. We needed all the help we could get. On screen, a dark-haired human blinked onto the view screen. Federation vessel, this is Commander Michael Roth of the Terran Union. We are here to assist in any way possible. I bowed my head graciously. Thank you for coming, Commander Roth. I am General Kylon. Please join our formation and help cover our retreat. Retreat? The human commander blinked a few times, looking confused. Our intentions are to engage and terminate the enemy. With five ships. All due respect, the devourers number in the thousands and they crushed our fleet of equal magnitude. I wouldn't expect a peaceful species like yours to understand warfare, but it's in your interest to follow our lead, I said. Commander Roth seemed even more confused. You think humans are a peaceful species? What the hell, why would you think that? Well, you never fight with anyone. You resolve everything with talk. Humans are the lowest rated species on the aggression index, I replied. I see the Federation has misjudged us there. Do you know why we avoid war, General? Because you don't think you can win? Fear? The human laughed heartily. No, it's because we know what we are, what we're capable of, and nobody's deserved that quite yet. 
The idea of Terrans making ominous threats would have been a joke to me before now, but something in Roth's tone told me he believed what he was saying with conviction. This was a clear case of delusion stemming from a lack of experience with interstellar warfare. The devourers would make fools of the earthlings and punish them for their overconfidence. However, if the commander really wanted to send his men to a slaughter, I would not stop him. If you insist on fighting, I certainly won't stand in your way, but know that you're on your own. We're getting out of here. What is your plan? I asked. We brought a nanite bomb we developed. We've never actually used one before since in about 5% of simulations they don't stop with localized entities and consume all matter in the universe, Commander Roth said. This way too casually for my liking. But we programmed them to self-destruct after a few seconds, which will probably work. Night Carter, fire at the enemy in five seconds, I said, my eyes widening in alarm. Wait, hold up. You just said it could destroy everything. The Terran flagship fired a missile before I could get in another word to stop them. At first, I thought that they had missed their mark. The projectile sailed through the Devourer fleet, not connecting with a single ship. Then it detonated at the rear of the formation and all hell broke loose. Space itself seemed to shudder as an explosion tore through anything in its vicinity. The force was so powerful that our sensors could only provide an error message as measurement. At least a third of the Devourer fleet was instantly vaporized as an improbable amount of energy and heat turned them to metal soup. There was no way any occupants of those ships lived through that. The enemy vessels further out from Ground Zero survived the initial blast, though many of them sustained heavy damage. But an invisible force seemed to be slowly dissecting each of them. I could only watch in disbelief as the mighty cruisers disintegrated bit by bit. I suppose the bomb had thrown out a swarm of nanobots which had attacked the ship's structure on a molecular level. The devourers hardly knew what hit them. By the time they thought to return fire, there was nothing left to return fire with. Their arsenal evaporated in a matter of seconds, and undoubtedly their personnel suffered the same fate. Where there had once been an unstoppable army now only stood empty space. The humans had unleashed a wave of destruction that was unrivaled by anything I had ever seen in my military career. With just a single missile, horror shot through my veins at the thought that they might one day turn their monstrous weapons on the Federation. There was no way to defend oneself against such diabolical creations. The aggression index needed an update. The kind of species that would invent weapons like that was not to be trifled with. Glancing around at my crew, I saw stunned and aghast reactions that mirrored my own. If they ever became hostile, the humans represented a threat of the highest level. They could more than likely wipe out the entire galaxy without breaking a sweat. Now that's taken care of, you should have just invited us to the party to start with, Commander Roth grinned. Tell you what, General, next time we meet, you owe us a beer. I frowned. The humans could ask for much more than a drink if they wanted to. Yeah, I think we can do that. Commander Roth terminated the call and I watched as the Terran ships warped back into hyperspace. I was still trying to wrap my mind around the whole thing and I wondered how I was going to put this into words for the combat report. The Federation had no idea who the Terrans truly were, but I was going to make sure they did. As I played the events of the day over in my mind, it clicked. I finally understood why such a powerful species would not show its hand. The humans avoided war because it would be too easy for them to win. The Federation Senate was expecting the worst when the messenger arrived. As per galactic customs, the fastest ship was sent ahead of the fleet to provide a first-hand account of the battle to the ambassadors. The terrified look on the young Jitari's signed face as he entered the Senate chamber seemed to confirm everyone's fears. I remembered the transmission we had received just a few hours ago detailing the grim predicament of those who had confronted the devourers. The numbers of confirmed losses had already been hefty, and without any Federation members sending in backup, we could be looking at as much as a 90% casualty rate. As Speaker, I had tried to persuade the mid-tier aggression species to offer assistance, but they all flatly refused. If I had the power to force them to go, I would have. We all knew about the trail of destruction the devourers left in their wake, but we had no choice but to stop them. They would push us to the brink of extinction if we allowed them to plow through our galaxy. 
There were a few odd points to the messenger's behavior, however. As he walked up to the podium, he locked eyes with Terran Ambassador Nicky Johnson and swallowed nervously. I noticed that his hands were shaking. The Jitari were a proud, honor-driven race who had seen the horrors of war time and time again. Never before had I seen one return home looking like they'd seen a ghost, and why would his fixation be on the peaceful humans of all races? Oh, hello, Senators. I'm Ennis Tuss, the Herald's gaze had not left Ambassador Johnson, the Jitari said. The devourers have been defeated. Not a single one of their ships survived. Surprised murmurs spread through the assemblage. I was puzzled as well. The earlier correspondents had painted a hopeless picture for our men. If there had really been such a drastic turn of events, we needed to know how it happened. Whatever tactics the fleet had employed could be passed on to other commanders for future encounters. A quick glance across the room revealed most of the representatives in a state of confusion, but the Terran ambassador was smirking, a predatory glint in her eyes. There was something about her expression that unsettled me. Deep in my subconscious, I leapt to my hooves, keen on restoring order. How is this possible? Please explain. Well, Madam Speaker, it was the humans. They only sent a few ships to our aid, but they built something awful, the Innistus's voice had dropped to hardly more than a whisper. It was like they harnessed a supernova. Never in my life have I seen such destruction. Utter chaos erupted as shocked exclamations rose to a crescendo, and all heads turned toward Ambassador Johnson. I wasn't sure I believed this account of the battle. The humans possessing some terrible weapon capable of destroying the devourers? It was common knowledge that they avoided war at all costs. Sanic Ambassador Kazil laughed and raised a talon to speak. Respectfully, the humans are not a fighting species. Savvy, cunning, greedy, they are all these things. But if they had weapons that could wipe out the devourers, they'd be more than talkers and diplomats. They'd rule the galaxy by now. The Zanuck were in the upper echelons of aggressive species but also were humanity's primary trading partner. The Terran Union had won them over with their willingness to sell anything for a price, and despite differing philosophies on violence, the two powers had become close allies. You're wrong. I saw it with my own eyes, Enistus replied. The truth of humanity is that they are killers. They are dangerous. The general thinks we should seek their friendship, but I'm not sure I agree. I don't trust them. I turned my gaze to Ambassador Johnson. We should let the Terran representative answer. What do you have to say? Is this true? Ambassador Johnson sighed wearily. Yes, it's true. Earth has many last resort weapons stashed away. We are very good at warfare, but we try to find a different way. Why did you present us with a false image of your species? I demanded. You speak of peace and yet you've been hiding away the strongest weapons in the galaxy. We never wish to use them, she said. Your aggression index, the high aggression species are often territorial and seek to conquer. If the Federation had looked into our history, you would have seen that we were once like that. We lost millions of lives in wars between our factions and we grew tired of all that bloodshed. Humanity has tried to be better. Our destructive, impulsive nature is still there. We just buried it deep. You see, we are the only aggressive species to have a strong sense of empathy as well. We grapple with that duality constantly. We control ourselves with rules and, for the most part, we choose good. But we know the depths of depravity that exist. We knew that one day someone truly evil would come along and we would have to be worse. I digested her words, my mind still reeling. A war with one's own species that had millions of casualties. Even the worst conflicts in the Jutari's early history numbered around 200,000 dead, and they were a 15 of 16 on the aggression scale. The bloodiest war we had previously known of didn't hold a candle to the human's past. A species with that much of a propensity for violence should have killed itself off. There was no way they should be able to form a functioning society, let alone to think that they were acting as the galactic peacemakers. It was hard to reconcile my experiences with civilized, smooth-tongued human diplomats with the vile history Ambassador Johnson had described. No matter how much the humans claimed to be able to control their savagery, 
we could not trust them. A species with such a drive to violence could easily stab you in the back in a moment of anger and think nothing of it. Honestly, if I wasn't afraid of retaliation, I would have raised a motion to oust the Terran Union from the Federation then and there. But even if it was playing with fire, it was probably better to have them on our side than to have them turn their artillery on us. We would have to monitor them much more closely, though. I forced a neutral expression. You did save us from an enemy we could not beat on our own. We owe you a great debt. It will take some time for the Federation to fully consider what you have just told us, but we thank you for ending the war. Ambassador Johnson's eyes hardened. The war is not over, Speaker. We defeated one fleet, but the devourers will send more if they are not eliminated, and they only would come back stronger. Humanity does not expect your blessing, but we do ask for your forgiveness for what we are about to do. What? What are you about to do? I asked cautiously. We're going to strike their homeworld with antimatter bombs. No survivors. It is a permanent solution. It may not be pretty, but we don't see any other options to put an end to the terror they subject the rest of the cluster to, she replied. Even the most aggressive species looked appalled at the suggestion. I noticed the ambassadors in closest proximity to the human edging away as though they were afraid she might bite. I shook my head fervently. That is genocide. The Federation cannot accept the eradication of an entire species. Please let us try to negotiate a truce. We must exhaust peaceful avenues before even considering an attack like this. You can't reason with someone who only wants to destroy you. Kill or be killed, Ambassador Johnson rose from her seat, collecting her belongings. How many innocent species have already perished by their hands? As far as we're concerned, it's better them than us. The Terran representative exited the building, waving farewell to Ambassador Kazil as she departed. I could not fathom how any sentient could be so calm and detached at the prospect of glassing a planet, even one of a parasitic race like the Devourers. I wondered if we should at least make some sort of attempt to stand in the human's way. It was unlikely we could stop them, but at least we could say we tried. Things were simpler when we had thought they were peaceful. A part of me wished that that lie could have lasted for just a bit longer. I missed our pacifist friends already.